All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope today, uh, together, we will learn some more information about uh, the religion. It's called Islam. Uh, a Muslim he sent to me a question and said, "How come Allah always answer our questions?" And he said, please, don't put my name in the screen. Okay. How Allah always answer our question. I mean, this was very shocking for me. I thought Allah never answer any question. A Muslim saying to me, how come Allah? Always answer our questions. I mean, is that, are you serious? Like what? What is the questions Allah always answer? I'm not sure how I can work this out and how we can make this uh, come true. Is it a fantasy? Is it a dream? Is it the Muslim wishing something to happen? So today we will examine if this is true or it is just a person he wish that his God answer anything. And let me be sure that I'm going to be in, uh, in Skype. So if there is any Muslim would like to call us and, you know, join us in the topic. Here we go. We are in Skype already. <clears throat> uh Look like I have many messages in uh, Skype. All right. All right. So our Skype is open. And this is what happened to you if you are Christian Prince. You open your Skype, you get scared like endless messages. And same as uh, uh, Facebook. Answering questions is something very important for us as a human being. A person, he is exist as a human being when he get the answers and he asks questions. Yes, Ahmed, why you are calling, Ahmed? Uh, I am calling you because I, I want to prove you that you lied hmm. the other day. What, what I lied? You lied about the Salat. You said uh, when you start uh, uh, the salat, we say Allah Akbar three times, hmm. and this is not true. We okay, let us make a deal. Let us make a deal. If I if I show you as a Muslim is a cleric, starting the prayer by saying Allah Akbar three times, are you willing to open the camera and do the monkey dance? You can, and. You not only you, every one of your subscriber, my friend, my friend, let us make a deal. Don't don't waste my time. Don't you want to get me busted? Of course. Okay. Who is the one who start the prayer? You or the let, imam? Let, let, let me. Who is the one who start the prayer? You or the imam? Let me speak. Abdul, I'm. Whilst you are speaking, you are calling me to get me busted, right? I'm giving you a chance to get me busted. If we show a video for everybody, your imam is starting the prayer. And saying Allahu Akbar three times, what you would do? What you will do? Are you are you willing? Aren't you? Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. Listen, I have no time for kids. Either you say yes or you say no. Because I because that three times thing is. Don't you want to get me busted? Don't you want to get me busted, Abdul? You are a stupid idiot like all of you. Either you say yes. Either you say yes. I challenge you. And I will do the monkey yes, dance in the you. camera. I huh? I challenge you. Okay. I challenge go to the previous you. video, you, you idiot. But, but, but okay. Is, okay, go. The challenge is All right. that we the Muslims, uh -huh. we Muslims, uh -huh. when we start, uh, how first of all, you are, we... first of all, you are not a Muslim. You are uh, not. You are not. Because you do not know how your Imam start the prayer. How come? Mm, you, you do. I, 
Okay, no, let no, us make no. the challenge. If I show you right no, now no, the actually, imam, no, the imam of Mecca, the imam of Mecca, you know what Mecca? The Kaaba, the highest imam for you to pray for you in Mecca. If I show you how he do, Abdul, 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 listen, either you say yes or no. What maybe? Don't tell me maybe. Either you say yes or you say no. Regular prayer. He regular prayer. prayer. Regular prayer. So this guy not regular prayer. The Imam of the Kaaba is making Allahu Akbar three times. Is not doing regular prayer. prayer. Abdul. Abdul. Let your let your daddy call me. Abdul. I'm going to post. I'm going to post the link. So everybody, everybody will see how stupid are you. Everybody will see how stupid are you. Huh? Should I play the sound for you? Should I play the sound? Should I play the sound? Abdul, do you see how many times he said Allahu Akbar? Listen, listen, listen. Listen, you have to do the, the monkey it dance for me right now. Stupid idiot. Go, go. Let, let your dad call me next time, okay? What a donkey. You didn't, you didn't learn his name. You didn't learn his name. Everything in your religion is based on number three. Allah, Jibreel, Muhammad. Everything in your religion is based on number three. And when you start the prayer, yes, the Imam, he called for the prayer and he say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And when your prophet, he enter a place, he say, Assalamu Alaikum three times. And even just to show you how stupid Muhammad is, even when he go to the bathroom, he told the Muslim to shake their penis three times. Your religion is based on number three. Everything. You did not I want to show you. I don't have time for kids. Just get lost. Don't call me again. Get you busted. You fail. Not only you say it three times. You say you can repeat yourself. What a potato. Let us continue. Any Muslim want to call us, either you are willing to take the challenge or not. I, don't, I have no time for kids. If you call me to challenge me, you better take the challenge. Either you say, I'm going, I'm going to do the challenge or not. You challenge me, I prove it. We Muslims, we don't do that. No, Akbar. Who? You are not a Muslim. You are, you are just a kid. You do not know what Islam is about. Not even one single Muslim from those who they are listening to me, they knew what Islam is about. And this is my challenge. Who is the one who want to call me and tell me what Islam means? What is the name of the God of Islam? They don't know. They don't even know how to say the name of their God correctly. They do not know the real name of their prophet. They do not know what Allah means. They do not know if Allah one word or two words. They know nothing. This is a cult based on nothing, have nothing, and answer nothing. And when you ask a Muslim scholar a question, he says to you, Allah knows best. Allah knows what? Allah knows best. But who is the one who knows best in Islam? Nobody. Because Allah does not exist. Have you ever heard of religion based on Allah knows best? You see, we have this guy there, uh, Aji. He keep posting Allahu Akbar and etc. Why you don't call me? Let us laugh. Not a single Muslim can tell me what the word Allah mean. Any Muslim? Just to show you how ignorant they are. Christian, they knew what Elohim mean. They knew what Yahweh mean. They knew what Yeshua mean. They knew what we knew. Muslim do not know what Ishmael mean. They do not know what Abraham mean. They do not know what Jibreel mean. They do not know what Allah mean. They do not know anything. What kind of religion the followers of it have no idea what those words mean? And re remember, those are the whole religion is based on them. If a Muslim cannot tell me what Allah as a word mean, I mean this is this is really a, relig a screwed religion. What Allah mean? They don't know what Jibreel mean. 
They don't know. What Ishmael mean? They don't know. They don't know. Why? Because this cult is copied from others. They don't know. They copy the names of foreign language and they use it in their cult. But what Jibreel mean? Nobody knows. So how we will know? You know, before we ask the Muslims, and the funny, this kid, he is, he is thinking about it for the last two days. <laughs> when we ask the Muslims, okay, in the Quran, let's switch to Arabic, as an example, not only do they not know what the names mean, they do not know even who are they. As an example, here we go. This is the word Isra Israel. Israel. Okay. If you ask any Muslim what Israel means, they do not know. They have no idea. Okay, how this how this name end in your book? Okay, okay. Forget about you do not know what the word Israel means. Who is Israel? They don't know. Do you believe it? Who who is this guy Israel? The Quran keeps saying Israel, Israel, look how many times. Look, all over the Quran, 41 times, 41 verses. The word Israel appear. Not even once the word Palestine appear. Do you believe it? What Israel mean? Neither Allah, neither Muhammad, neither all the Abduls in the world, they knew what Israel mean. And not only that, they do not know who is Israel. They will tell you, in order to know what Israel is, we have to go to the Bible. The Bible? I thought the Quran is came to replace everything. What kind of a book you cannot understand it without going and reading other books? Any Muslim can explain to us? Who is Israel and what Israel mean? They don't know. Do you remember the guy who called me last time? He said, I said to him, okay, name for me a prophecy, the prophet he said. He said, he don't have to have a prophecy. I mean, have you ever heard of a religion like this? Name for me a prophecy, your prophet said. So why you call him prophet? He said, he don't have to have a prophecy. He don't have to have a prophecy. Yet you call him a prophet. I mean, is that, isn't it, this is a, something? Look how many times the word Israel appear. Okay, who is Israel? Who is this guy Israel? I am a person who want to learn about Islam and I, I want to convert to Islam so I can get four women. I like to go to the to the restaurant and hold eight hands with, between my hands and I say to all those women at once, I love you. I want to date four women in the same time, halal. I want to take them to my bedroom. Hmm? I want to do jungle bungle. La, 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 la. Four women with me. Huh? Who want to explain to me if Allah cannot explain? Allah have time to tell us the end. She said to the end, hide, otherwise Suleiman will crush you. Like, what the heck? Who care about the end? What I did learn from the story of the ant. Nice to meet you, ant. And by the way, who in the world would believe such a story? Suleiman, he went to the valley of the ants. And one of the ants, she said, and Allah is reporting the ant, the creator of the galaxies. Not galaxy, not one, galaxies. He is telling us a story about the ant, she said to the ant. I mean, this is cute. This is amazing. Yeah. I cannot believe it. I mean, this is this is this is something, man. And you are telling me Allah is not uh, not a cute God? Look at this. Hmm. Look at this. It's very beautiful. Till when they reach the valley of the ants, an ant explained. Oh, ants, enter your dwelling 
last lest Solomon and his armies crush you what the heck this is so much this is so cute I feel like I am five years old kid again and my grandma is telling me a story so Allah have time to tell us about this crap he don't have time to tell me what Israel and how the how in the world you Muslims believe in this Suleiman he arrived to the valley of the ants what is that in California there's a valley for the ant like in the whole earth there is only one place you can find ants it's called the valley of the ants take a note please guys I am going to go next actually this month in a trip and I promise you I will take a video of ants if I arrive to the valley of the ants I will do my best to find it I will do my best to find the valley of the ants and I will take a selfie with it hey brother brother look I found ants finally I found it there is ants everywhere what do you mean the valley of the ants in the Philippines I was in the 40th floor and the ants arrived there you believe it in the 40th floor I mean they, they like high buildings I think they are doing I was thinking why the ants go into the 40th floor why I'm think I get one answer I think those are committing suicide they go to high and then you jump I don't know I don't know I could not find the answer yet so he arrived to the valley of the ants and Suleiman he heard one of the ants only one I mean there's like in the valley of the ants how many billion ants they are talking brother only when at he heard why if there is any Muslim and Allah answer our questions can Allah answer us now how in the world this guy he heard only one ant what happened to the rest they were mute silence silence the Prophet Suleiman is walking and only one ant is talking. I mean, it makes sense. One prophet, one ant, the rest are mute. The whole universe is in mute. And this prophet, he can hear ants, which they don't talk because ants are mute. Guys, it's very amazing. Suleiman. Or Solomon, he smiled, laughing at her speech. Look at this idiot, Selena. I mean, show respect, man. Show respect. Her speech? An ant is making a speech. Are you watching too much cartoon, Muhammad? You can go right now and check. You will see that ants, as every creature in this earth, they communicate. They have a communication. Let us say they talk, yes, but not by making a speech. They do vibration, chemical. This is how they communicate. But not by making a speech, my friend. So how he heard her speech. If we go back to the story of Israel, we will find the answer because Muhammad when he moved to Al Medina the city of Yathrib he lived between the Jews correct the city this town is full of Jews and this is where Muhammad he got all his dumb stories the ants speaking to Suleiman those are from the legion of the Jews you can go right now and search them in the internet they are repeated for a thousand of years this is not something new but the Edith Muhammad, he took it as something serious. He put it in his book as a reader story. Flying carpet of Suleiman. You know, the Jews, they made a lot of stories about Suleiman. Like Suleiman, he can do things nobody can do. He have a flying horse, flying carpet, flying mule, flying blah, 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 blah. This guy, he have a jumbo mambo kingdom. So Muhammad, he lived between the Jews. And whatever the Jews, they say, he like it. 
you know, his antenna is like, and he was writing down the information. The Gustavo. The Jews, they talk, they tell false stories, stupid stories, and Muhammad, he take it, he put it in his Quran. Everything you find in the fairy tale stories of the Jews, you find it in the Quran. And you know what? What make it more funny that Allah He taught Suleiman. I mean, if you ask a Muslim how Suleiman he learned the language of the ants, he will tell you, Allah taught him, brother. Are you sure? Yes, brother. Are you very sure? Yes, brother. Are you very, very, very sure? Yes, brother. What's wrong with you, brother? I told you I'm very sure. Okay. But the Quran said that Allah He taught Suleiman the language of the birds. He did not teach him the language of the ants. In the same chapter, if we go, let us go down. Hold on. <clears throat> Here we go. Mm, let us go. Uh, it's a part of my real name. Okay, no problem, my friend. <coughs> what happened here? Any Muslim want to tell us how who Suleiman he spoke the language of the of the ants? Any Abdul? Any Muslim? I'm showing you just example in the screen about about Allah. Who wanna? Who is a Muslim wanna call me and tell me what's happening? Hmm. Who is the Muslim wanna tell us what's happening here? If you don't like this translation, we can go to different translation, you know. Allah, he taught him the language of the birds. So Allah, he taught uh, Solomon the language of the birds, and he starts speaking and understanding the language of the ants. Is it considered in Islam that ants are birds? Is that a true? It's like somebody saying, I took a class to learn the language of the donkeys and then I start understanding the lizard. I mean, what is the connection between the ants and the language of the birds? Any Muslim can tell us? Ask no questions, Allah knows best. He learned the language of the birds, and why Allah He taught Suleiman the language of the birds? What what the what the point? Hey Suleiman, can you translate this for me, please? I want to say anyone wanna debate me. I want you to translate that to the chicken. Suleiman, please go translate. Okay, thank you, Suleiman. Do you should I pay you something for the translation? The language of the birds. I mean, do you think the birds have one language? Why they are one kind? What do you mean the language of the birds? Have you ever heard a turkey making a sound the same as a chicken? You never heard of a bird doing this? 
This is not like so. What do you mean the language of the birds? Obviously, they have different languages. So, what do you mean he taught them the language of the birds? Obviously, the one who made the Quran, he thought that all birds speak one language. But maybe because they eat different food, brother, this is why the voice coming differently. You never heard of the duck? Hawk, 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 hawk. How we can how we can say we taught them the language of the birds? Is that does that mean he took a class for all like ducks? I mean, can you imagine how many birds we have in the earth? I mean, what, what how many kind of birds? All of them. He taught him the language of the birds to do what exactly? I mean, why Allah did not spend time to teach him the language of mankind? There is many human beings in this earth who speak many languages. In India alone, there's thousands of languages. So Allah have time to teach him the language of the birds. Who, why? What he will do? He will go. He will go and preach and teach the chicken. Guys, don't call uh, Aji names, please. Just have mercy on this guy. Poor guy. Any Muslim want to answer us? <clears throat> By the way, I'm thinking to start a classroom to, che to teach uh, a chicken language. And then after we finish the chicken language, we will start doing uh, a turkey language class. And you know, etc. Like, you know, and by the way, I I'm going to charge you high money. i sorry, because this is, there's no other teacher can do it. I'm the only one who can do that. Because Allah, he taught me the language of the birds. <laughs> and I will make you sign a disclaimer. Don't tell me that you cannot understand what the chicken is saying after I teach you because chickens are very tricky. They change their language every few months for security. The language of the chicken? Allah, he taught him the language of the chicken. Why? Allah answered our questions. Here we go. Here we go. I just simple question. Why Allah taught him the language of the birds? He taught him the language of the birds, but yet he understand the language of the ants. Did did Suleiman he enter the wrong classroom? He thought this is for the bird, but he it was for the ants. Had somebody told you that ants and birds are the same? Hmm? Who is a Muslim who not call us and tell us how Allah he answered your questions? And then now I don't see any Muslim. Like here we go. I asked him a question. Who was Israel? <clears throat> By the way, my voice is not good, so I uh, uh, forgive me if uh, I'm not going to speak long today. My voice is uh, kind of. Uh, I think I. <clears throat> I think I ate too much chicken, or maybe I was translated too much the chicken. I don't know. And just to show you, not only Suleiman he speak the language of the birds. No, 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 no. Muhammad he do. You know. Uh, Muhammad he said, if you heard uh, the sound of the donkey. Let me let me get you the hadith. If you heard the sound of the donkey, seek refuge by Allah. Okay, why? 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 Let us see why. Hmm, I cannot find this one here. Let us see. We should find it actually. Doesn't make sense. I hope they will not hide it, but I think I saw it here before in this website in English. All right. The Prophet Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. Doesn't say that in Arabic. It says, May Allah pray, Allah pray on him and salute him. 
when you hear the crowing of the cock in the night it has seen an angel what 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 this is a translation how Muhammad he knew from the sound of the rooster what he saw and if you hear the sound of the donkey at night in the night be careful here be careful friend take a note please this is at night not any time hmm? look at this here this is even more deep and more serious and you are telling me Muhammad isn't a prophet you must be crazy not to believe in him seriously I feel sorry for you who can come with this except a prophet of God who no way read carefully with me please the knowledge the knowledge is a dropping like honey from the prophet Jubair ibn Abdullah reported I know Jubair by the way but I do not know Abdullah like I suppose that we know who is this guy I mean how in the world we will know who is Jubair the one who wrote this hadith is exist hundreds of years after those guys how he knew who is this guy he was there and the Muslim will say to you wouldn't accept your Bible is written 60 years after Jesus what 60 years after Jesus who said 60 years it says that I can show you okay now you have somebody telling you about Jesus and about Muhammad 300 years after Muhammad which means 900 years after Jesus yet they say it's sahih sahih it is sahih brother it is a sahih hadith read carefully Jabir ibn Abdullah reported that the messenger of Allah may Allah pray on him and salute him said when you hear the dog barking oh, 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 or a donkey bearing or oh, oh, okay and at the night seek refuge with Allah they see what you do not see <laughs> this is deep this is serious now you might be laughing my friend if I am you, I will not. This is a deep knowledge no one knows except a prophet of God. So look at the secrets of knowledge the prophet he is. This is wisdom. This is coming directly from God. Like hotline. Ta -da 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 -da. Muhammad, yes, Allah. Muhammad, take this info for you. Don't share it anyone except with the Muslims and Christian friends. If you hear a dog ho, 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 doing that at night, seek refuge by Allah, which means by me. Why Allah? Why? Because he saw a shaitan. <laughs> oh boy. Look what the Muslim there is saying. I bet a Christian prince is not handsome and old. Look what we are talking about and look what the Muslims are busy with. This guy is thinking if I am handsome or not. I'm telling you. This religion is weird look what I'm showing him in the screen and he is worried if I am handsome or not and in you and you are wondering why Allah he promised them boys in the heaven the guy is talking huh, behind the microphone is he handsome not handsome hmm. if I'm dying to know maybe he's handsome maybe he's not and Christian Prince is spending his time showing in the screen hadith after hadith, Quran after Quran, and the Muslims thinking, hmm, do you think he's handsome? Maybe he is not handsome. What if he's handsome? <laughs> deep, deep. Those those people are very deeply rooted with knowledge and deep thought. Unbelievable. Let us continue. Lord have mercy. Here. Muhammad is giving you his like you know you know how they make a cream from uh, from the uh, from the milk you know like the best of the of the milk you know they take it off and supposedly people they don't want fat you know in the milk which is very very it's not and smart I don't want to say stupid 
because if you drink milk without fat I mean what you are drinking water you are hurting yourself I mean you are not drinking milk hello anyway people what you can say so Muhammad here he got a lot of milk and now he want to share the best of it with you and here we go bingo he grab it he throw it at our face If you hear the dog barking or a donkey brain in the night seek refuge with Allah Look 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 the connection between the two part of the story you see this is this is this is really seriously influencing me now I'm I'm going to reformat my brain because Look, look at the look at look how you connect. You see, people they say to me, Your English is funny. I mean, the prophet he speaks not only perfect English, he speaks perfect Arabic, and he have the logic. If you hear a dog barking at when at night, ah, so guys, if you hear the dog barking at night, it's not a thief jumping in your house to steal your money, it is the shaitan. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh boy. Hmm. Now I know why dogs we have them at home at night. But uh, uh, what I can say, I mean, this is deep. It is not the thief trying to steal your chicken and your ducks and your money, whatever you have in your farm or your house. No, it is just Shaitan passing by driving driving his Lamborghini. I mean, how he knew that? How the prophet knew that this is so astonishing, it's so beautiful. I am speechless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk. I told you I'm speechless. This is too much. And look how Muhammad connected between two animals the dog and the donkey. You, you, do you know why? Anyone knows why the dog and the donkey? Do you remember Muhammad? He said, three things do interrupt a Muslim prayer a dog and a donkey, and the women. <laughs> let it go, let it go. Deep knowledge. Muhammad he made the women equally equal to dogs and donkeys. Aisha she said to the Muslims, "You made us equal to dogs and donkeys." Who Aisha? He is. They are not the one who made who said that. It's your your husband. He is the one who said that. By saying you made us equal to the dogs and the donkeys, you just admitted that your husband Muhammad he made you equal to the dogs and the donkey. Here. Muhammad continue with his knowledge which is beyond imagination he says they see what you do not see guys don't you feel jealous from any donkey in the world now seriously Muhammad just confirmed that dogs and donkeys they see what we see not not they feel no 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 they see they see their eyes oh. as I know that those animals they don't even see colors hmm. they are colorblind they see the whole world black and white how they can do that they can see what we cannot see hmm. and what they see exactly you might ask yourself maybe Maybe my dog now, when a woman walking in the bikini in the beach, he see her naked? No, no, my friend, he's not talking about this. Uh, maybe my dog, he can see what is inside my pocket? No, this is not what he is saying. M maybe uh, my dog now, he can see what is inside uh, uh, the refrigerator? No. He's talking about something different. Your donkey and your dog can see shaitan specifically 
Isn't it weird that Muhammad he cannot see them? He cannot see shaitan. He could not recognize shaitan. But a donkey and a dog can do that. Do you remember, guys, the stories of the examination of the wahi, which means examination of the inspiration? Anyone remember it? Who remember that story? Anyone remember? Let me show you the reference. Hold on. It is search for it. I don't think I can find it in English in our English, but I can find it in Arabic and translate. Um, all right. Here we go. Asir al Nabawiya ibn Hisham. This is official Islamic website, islamweb.net. Volume number one, page number 239. How Muhammad he examined that the one he see in his room is an angel. You will not believe it. Yeah, guys, don't forget to unsubscribe to my channel if you are already subscribed. And don't forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed. This way we can get double blessing. Don't forget, please. We are Arab. We are very smart. And we have a very special idea, different from anyone idea. And the idea in the front of you is very special. Muhammad, he sees someone in his room, in the corner of his room. But he is not sure what is that. I mean, how you can be sure now? You are a prophet of God, but you are not sure. How you can be sure? The title of this chapter, it's called Imtihanu Khadija Burhanul Wahi. The examination of Khadija of the inspiration of the Prophet. Oof. Khadija is the one who examined it? How? Khadija looked like she had a degree in inspiration examination. She is the one can tell you if this is coming from God or not. Khadija. Mm hmm The story in the front of me to make it simple. And Khadija radiallahu anha anha qalat li Rasulullah. Atas ay ibn am. Atas tatia an tukhbiruni bi sahibiki hada ladi yatika idha jaak. Oh my cousin. You know the Arab they call the husband my cousin. Can you tell me? When your friend, the one who come to you, he come, Muhammad is reporting, he sees someone coming to him. But he did not know who is this guy. He come to his room, he don't talk. So she said to him, can you tell me when he show up again? He said, yes. قال نعم. قالت فإذا جاءك فأخبرني به. So if he came, please tell me. فجاءه جبريل. So Jibreel came over. And he did the same as you to do. What he used to do, later is going to tell us. He used to sit in the corner of the room. So Jibreel come every day. He sit in the corner of the room. I mean, look at this crazy guy. An angel come into Muhammad's room, sitting in the corner. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. So the Prophet of Allah, may Allah pray on him and salute him, said to Khadija, Hey Khadija, Jibreel is here. He came. Call it. Let me make the, the, the writing thinner. So study can read the text. Okay. She said, uh, okay, 
Okay, okay, okay, cousin. Stand up, stand up, and sit in the top of my left leg, the thigh, the thigh of his her leg. So the prophet stood and he sat on her. She said to him, Hal tara? Do you see him? Qalanam. He said, Yes. She said, Okay, change and sit in the right on my right thigh. And she said, The prophet moved and sat in the right thigh. And she said, Do you see him? He said, Yes. She said, Okay, now move and sit in the top of me in my lap. Things is getting more exciting now. She said, so the prophet did sit in her lap. She said, do you see him? He said, yes. Man, still he see him. So she started taking off her clothes, taking off her covers. And the prophet is in the top of her in her in his lap in her lap. And she said to him, Do you see him? He said, No. She said, Oh my cousin, oh my cousin, stand not stand still, which means like you know, uh, uh, you, you are in good stand. Good news, I swear by Allah, Fawallahi inna hu la malak malak. I swear by Allah, this is an angel and he is not a shaitan. Do you believe it? This is how Muhammad learned that this is an angel, not a shaitan, by his wife striptease and sitting in the top of her in a sexual position you ask the muslims why the angel he left he said because now they will have sex so he's shy he decided to leave i mean what's wrong with you muslims this is how muhammad confirmed that he is a prophet by his wife stripping off and why she cannot see the angel only muhammad can see him The angel in the same room, and she is in the same room. Muhammad can see the angel in the corner. Khadija, she cannot see the angel. The wife, she asked the prophet to sit in the top of her left leg. The prophet sat like a baby, like a chicken, like a kid. What is that? And then she asked him, where she learned this trick? Anybody can tell me where, I, where, where Khadija, she learned this trick? Looked like she married many husbands before, who they have prophecy of God. And always she do this trick. How in the world she got this trick from? How she knew that now if she take off her clothes, the angel will go. And why he will go? When a Muslim, he says to me, well, because the angel is shy, you Muslims will have sex non-stop in heaven. What shy? You will be all day long for eternity having nothing except sex. And here we connect this story to the story of the donkey. So how the donkey was able to recognize the shaitan, but Muhammad, he needed his wife to strip for him. Does that mean the donkey is more knowledgeable? How come Mr. Donkey did not ask his wife to do the same what Khadija did to him? Here we go. The, the donkey, he see a shaitan, but he is not sure. Let us say he's not sure, but in the case and the story and the hadith, he's sure. So if the donkey now, he want to be sure what he see is a shaitan or not, he's going to ask his 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 madam to strip for him. Oh, 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 oh. And his wife, she said, oh, 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 oh. okay, let me strip for you. What the heck? I mean, this is the true prophethood. And you are telling me Muhammad is not a prophet? And to make it, to make it more funny, the title of the story is Intihanu Khadija Burhanul Wahi. The examination, I'm translating as it is, the exam examination of Khadija and the proof of inspiration. 
how Islam is proven by the striptease of the wife of the Prophet and you are telling me Muhammad is not a prophet and you need to prove it it's proven already and to make it more funny look what it says down at the end of the page I, I, I don't want to miss this part I don't want to miss this part this part is the best many of you will like it especially the nasty one here she said that according to some stories قال ابن إسحاق وقد حدثت عبد الله ابن حسن عن هذا الحديث فقال قد سمعت أمي فاطمة this is the grandson of Muhammad supposedly the son of Fatima saying about this hadith and I heard that she made the prophet enter inside her clothes like in her between her her breast I mean isn't it amazing the prophet he go between her boobs and then the angel he go look what it says inni sami'tuha taqul udkh adkhaltu rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam baynaha wa bayna dir'iha fa dhahaba an dhalik inda dhalika jibril so she enter him inside and when she did that Jibreel here on the way now who won the reference it's in Arabic but I can do I cannot give it to you in English but you if you have my books you have it already in English translated and don't forget by the way that those who want to read my books or if you have my books don't forget to make uh, please a, a, a review of my books especially the last one and the rest of them actually all of them you better make a review uh, the German book this is the value number two for uh, this is Quran and science in German uh, and we have the new book which is six and Allah which is two value value number one and value number two and I know you guys you like it very much because it's full of information and the rest of the books you know uh, uh, if you don't mind, if you have the books already, don't forget to make a review and tell your friends about them. And I encourage people that, who speak French to tell their friends about the, the Secret of Prophet Arab, the French book. For this book is really translated by a fantastic translator. It's really a fantastic book. So if you speak French or you know friends who speak French, you can recommend them to read this book. And this is Quran and science in English, which is simply completing the deception of Allah book. Uh, because they meant to be one book actually, but the second one concentrate more in what Muslims call science. But both of them they speak about what called science and Quran. So now until now we got no answer for anything. How Muhammad he got an answer? Muhammad now is a prophet, but yet he need an answer if this is an angel or not. How he got the answer? Was it coming from Allah? No, it was coming from the legs of Khadija. How such a thing can be? How Muslims even accept such a thing? This is how you prove that he is a prophet? This is the proof that he is happy person who is enjoying being a prophet of God he sees somebody in there isn't it it's a very clear sign that this guy is a crazy guy why in the world an angel he come and he sit in the corner of the room he have nothing to do except sitting in the room what what is doing there so when a Muslim he says to us that Allah answer our questions I mean this is a, this is a madness how Allah answer your questions here we go you're a prophet you need an answer if this is an angel or not what what the problem he, we want an answer he's not sure how the solution came the solution did not come from Allah it came from the breast of Khadija and her and her and her legs and now I have a problem what if if what if the Jibril came to me I don't have a wife 
what I should do. What do you think? I mean, this is a serious problem. What if Jibreel came to me? How I will know that this is Jibreel, not someone else? I don't have a wife to do striptease for me. Question, Muslims. Did the wife of Musa's do the same to, Mo to Musa's? I mean, how Musa's recognize that he's, an, he's, a, he's a prophet? How David, how Solomon, this is the same story? Or all of them, like, is this, this is the way to examine inspiration of God by women doing striptease? So we go back here. Suleiman, he do not need a striptease wife to understand even the language of the ants. The poor Muhammad, he have no idea. He cannot speak his language. He cannot speak to angels. I mean, why you did not ask the angel, who are you? Why you are doing there? What are you doing there? You see, this is a clear sign that Muhammad is a crazy man. A strange man come in your room, sit in the corner. You see him, nobody see him. Shouldn't you notice right away that you are going crazy? Why an angel of God would not talk to you? What the purpose of coming here then? Sitting there doing nothing? The angel, he leave when you start having sex? What happened now? You stop having sex, the angel will come back? What a lousy angel? Who is the Muslim want to tell me what is the point that Allah he taught his Suleiman prophet the language of the birds but yet he understand the language of the ants and what for what is the point of this and what we learn from this story so now generation after generation they will learn this amusing story we watch cartoon let me watch Sindibad Sinbad in English, they call him Sinbad, right? What is this? Hmm? Any Muslim can tell us what's happening here. What the point of this? So we ask the Muslims who is Israel, not in a single location in the Quran, Allah tell us who is Israel, but he have time to tell us all those silly stories. Suleiman going through, he arrived at the valley of the ants. And not only that, just a minute after, we find different new story, which is more funny and more stupid. Suleiman, he check his chickens. What? You check the chickens. No, it's the hubu hubu. This bird can be found in the desert. Let me show you how they look like. Do you see how this bird look like? So you get an idea now. Do you see it? This is the minister of irrigation and dating. In the kingdom of Suleiman, do you believe it? <clears throat> and Suleiman now is a chicken on him. Like, where is the hoopoo? Where is the hoopoo? Hoopoo, where are you? Hoopoo, where is hoopoo? Hoopoo, where he go? Suleiman, a king who have hundreds of thousands of soldiers and the soul by the way the, the army of Suleiman later we will see in the same story that his army contained chickens birds genie humans so you can imagine I mean billions now he is he found out that he there is a one hoopoe is missing how 
I mean, this guy, Suleiman, must be fantastic. From all the huge number of his kingdom, he found that this bird is missing. And Suleiman, right away, he started an investigation. This is a very serious stuff, guys. Imagine you are a king and you find a bird from your kingdom is missing. I mean, do you see how horrible that is? So now Suleiman, he is so upset and he decided to do something about it. What Suleiman would do? Read carefully. And he thought among the birds and said, How is it? that I see not the hoopoe or he is among the absent like what the heck there's absent birds how, how you dare this guy he take a list every day by the names because they are army I told you they are army they are right the soldiers they have numbers yes sir yes sir drill sergeant what's your name yes sir yes sir I'm here so Suleiman is checking the birds and he found the hoopoe is missing. And look what Suleiman he said. Suleiman is getting now seriously upset. He don't want to know what Suleiman can do when he gets upset. I verily, I verily will punish him. Not punish him, punish him. Remember, Suleiman is a Middle Eastern like me. We don't say punish, we say punish. I verily will punish him. Like me and Suleiman and all the Arab, when we go to the grocery store, we don't seek shampoo. We look for shampoo. Do you have shampoo? And he asked you, what shampoo? He said, no, no, shampoo. Okay, what kind? A shampoo. Shampoo. It doesn't matter. So now Suleiman, he checked and he found that the bird is missing and now he is making an oath. I swear. I swear I verily will punish him. With a hard punishment, punishment, or verily I will slay him. Look what the heck! Things is getting messed up. This bird now is going to lose his life. How you do that, bird? You leave without a permission. Suleiman is going to slaughter him. And you are telling me the Quran is not a serious book of God? Who is who is one of you who said that to me? How dare you? This is not only serious, this is the top secret information. And the funny, the Muslim, they say that all of this is written in the board of Allah. So this is not only written in the Quran. No, Allah, he have a board, protected board, if you remember, in the Quran. And he put it between the eyebrows of the angel Israfil. So between the angel Israfil, all this information written there. That's what a man he said, verily, verily, I will punish him. Verily, verily, I will slay him. But look, we have to be honest here. Suleiman is a person of justice. He said, or he verily shall bring to me an explanation. Aha. If you have a legitimate excuse, I will let it go. I mean, do you see how nice this Jewish king? This is the first time I heard that a Muslim saying Jewish are nice. <laughs> Look like Muhammad, he forgot that this guy is a Jew. Hmm. Let it go, let it go. Do we have any Muslim here have a comment? Don't forget again to subscribe or to unsubscribe if you don't like what we are saying. Why Muslims they like what I am saying? I always I ask myself the question. They hate me because what I am saying. <laughs> because you know, a Muslim he watch, he listen to me first time. He, he would go crazy. He would be so upset. But it doesn't matter really how upset he is. 
sooner or later he will find out that everything I'm saying is true I mean I'm showing it reading it uh, and nothing of my own this is God this is God talking do you really believe that God will tell us such a silly stupid story a guy his name is today man checking the birds he found the bird is missing a guy his name is today man he checking the. Uh, he was walking he heard an ant speech do you know what God mean you know when you Muslim you say Allah is the one who created the universe so now the one who created the universe he have to time to tell me about the ant and Suleiman and this bird and Suleiman and now what this bird is doing where this bird go this bird he fly all the way to Yemen and he found there a queen and this queen she have no hair in her legs Ooh. guys do you know why I'm single still now until now because I'm really afraid that I'm going to marry a woman and then when we go to the bedroom I found that she have hair in her legs you don't want that that is a scary a woman and she have hair in her legs that is no no I prefer to stay single forever and then Suleiman he took his a flying carpet with 600,000 chairs on it and he put his kingdom ship equipment in the top of it and he flies all the way to Yemen flying carpet carrying 600,000 chairs Somebody, somebody call her boss. Somebody call Boeing, Boeing, Boeing seven seven seven. Tell them what you know. Tell them what we in the Middle East what we did before. You see, you Western, you say you made an airplane. Look, look what we have. We have airplane can carry six hundred thousand chairs and all the cameras and the donkeys and the horses and the goats and the birds and the chickens in the top of it. When you can do that. There's somebody asking me, do you want a bald lady? My friend, I'm talking about hair in her legs. What bald? You you misunderstood me. I'm not talking about hair. The, 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 the bird, he went to find a woman. She have no hair in her legs. Not bald. Come on. And you are telling me Islam is not from God. Who can come with this except God? What's wrong with you? Six hundred thousand chairs sitting in the top of a flying carpet. How the flying carpet to fly? Anyone knows how the flying carpet work? I mean the technique. Who of you here is an engineer? airline engineer hmm? anyone the only engineer here <clears throat> in this chapter here the same chapter chapter 21 verse number 81 it says that Allah he gave the command to Suleiman to command the wind you see the Muslim tried in their translation to that to make it uh, not clear but this is Yusuf Ali Shakir And we made Suleiman uh, Suleiman the wind blowing violent, pursuing its course by his command to the land which we blessed, and we are knower of all things. Look, this guy, Allah, he keeps saying we knows everything. 
how Allah he proved to us that he knows everything and he have answer uh, uh, because if you don't how he knew this how he knew that Suleiman is controlling the wind and the wind carry his flying carpet so what Suleiman does he jumped with his army in the carpet and then he ordered the carpet the, sorry the wind to go underneath the carpet and then the carpet fly and then he ordered the wind to go in certain direction And the direction of the carpet, by the way, by noon time is a travel of a one month. Yes, yes, one month. What, you don't believe me? Why people don't believe me? I mean, what is in this story is not believable. What's wrong with you? nothing all this story is very practical very truthful and uh, make a lot of sense let us see if we can find the interpretation for this verse so the muslim will not say i'm making things up you know them You know them, my friend, you know them. <coughs> okay, let's go. Let us see here first. This is a Jalalain, Tafsir a Jalalain. Tafsir, for those who do not know, mean interpretation. And we disposed for Suleiman the wind to blow strongly in another verse it's described as being a rockin to blow softly in other words it is either blowing violently or gently i mean look at the interpretation how nice either violently or gently you take it according to what he solomon wanted ah you see like you know sometimes you push the gas you know like, like the car go crazy Sometimes you go to drive softly. I mean, the depend, depend what Suleiman he wants. Makes sense. Making its way at his command to land which he blessed, namely Syria. What? But this guy, he went to the king of Yemen, Yemen queen of Yemen. What's Syria? He's going to Syria? Are you sure? Let us go and see the interpretation of Ibn Kathir. You see how fair we are we don't give interpretation to to islam as we wish we go and see what the muslim says or well, whatever the muslim says must be true you know i mean this is what they believe what we can say who knows better than what the muslims i mean the scholar this is a scholar so this is ibn kathir let us zoom in <clears throat> the book of ibn kathir Let us see. Where he speak about the flying carpet. Here we go. And we subjugated the mountains and the birds. Uh, no, this is no, this is the hold on. Ba, 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 Here we go. And to Suleiman, we subjugated the wind strongly ragging means we subjugated the wings that the strong wing wind to Suleiman running by his command so Suleiman guys if Suleiman was here now we will not ever have a tornado or a hurricane just make him move to Florida and you are fine I mean as you see the the, the wind is just by his command the wind come he push it away I mean what do you want more so running by his command toward the land which we had blessed, meaning the land of Asham, the greater Syria. 
and of everything we know okay he had now let us let us see how he fly you see until now we did not talk about how really he fly how he fly he had a mat made of wood on which he would place all the equipment of his kingship all i mean are you sure all i mean guys can you imagine how small this mat don't be honest don't you want to have one don't you wish you can have one Don't you? Imagine if a Trump now he decide to place all his war equipment and his kingship on a flying carpet. That's really amazing. So beautiful. And Trump he sit in the top of it and his funny hair fly in the wind and he is in the front because he's the king of the country. What we can do? He's in the front. He will sit with Milena Trump in the front. And Trump is going to tweet in his Twitter where we are flying. Isn't it beautiful to be flying as an American? And he will change his slang and he will say, make America fly again. If, if, that's, that's deep. Make America fly again. Who can beat that? Who? nobody make america fly again Oof. i have copyright over this by the way and you are telling me islam is not a true religion what's wrong with you Obviously, all of you, you have mental problem. It's obvious. It's obvious. It's in the front of you. Isn't it obvious? How in the world you can reject the truth of Allah? And you go to YouTube, you find endless videos about science in the Quran. If, 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 if. And even some Muslims, they say, by Allah saying this, he predicted the airplane and the airspace. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm converting Guys be honest be honest be honest do you enjoy listening to me or not Be honest can you find better entertainment than this <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's sad, but it's funny. What we can do? I mean, it's sad that there is a billions of a human being they believe in this garbage. I mean, how in the world you can believe in this? What you lost your mind, you people? What are you eating? Huh? What are you? What are you eating? In specific? What are you smoking? Hashish. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let me tell you this: uh, a, a break, commercial break. Uh, once, was I was in in, in a church, uh, the priest he uh, he came to me. He said, "Can I, I ask you for a favor?" I said, "Yeah, sure." He said, "You know, uh, during the service, uh, we have a lady. She stay with the kids, in their like 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 a nursing room, you know, and she did not show up today. And I don't know who can do it. Can you stay with them?" I said, "Okay." So they took me to the children's room. And those children, and he warned me, he, he warned me, he said, he, they will drive you crazy, huh? I'm telling you, they will drive you crazy. They are kids. I said, I know, I know what kids is about. So I, we, I went there, and then the service is over. And everybody came out of the church to come and get their kids. They came, and they thought the room is empty because there's no sound. Like, no, there is no screaming, there's no jumping. And they enter upon the room and all the kids are sitting and their mouth is open like ah uh, you know and i was telling them a story and then he said okay kids let us go and the, the kids 
for the first time ever usually they want to just go they are bored they said no no mom no dad no 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 we will not go you know like what what happened what what happened you don't want to go <laughs> Everybody like what what happened those kids usually they are doing the opposite So I made the, the family stay until we finish the story, you know And they don't want even their parents to sit and listen. They told them no leave 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 close the door close the door So we finished the story and then the the priest he asked me how you can do that. I said I always do it trust me <laughs> You know, kids are very, very beautiful, but always you have to adjust your level of, of, of language from speaking to an adult to a child. Don't When you see a child, don't ask him, how is your school? I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> he hates school. <laughs> so you have to be a kid with them. You have to be a child like them. Anyway, uh, you know, life, life is full of, uh, let us say, knowledge. And some of us, they have it, but they ignore it. They put it in the dark, like a dark corner in their in their dark room in their brain. They don't want even to use it. Knowledge is always around us. All what we need to do is to use it. And this is the story with the Muslims. The Muslims, they are plain blind. You give them the knowledge, and they lock it inside the dark room because this knowledge is scary for them they don't want to see it they don't want to know it but they knew it's there a muslim is listening to me right now can he deny anything i said to be false can he deny that this is not what is written in your books can he say christian prince is lying to you he cannot And this is what is painful. Do you see the kid who called me in the beginning of the program today? He said, I, I found that you are lying. So I'm, I am preaching about Islam, getting Islam busted for many years, and now he found one lie according to him. So he's excited. <laughs> and then he found that he's, he is the one who is stupid, not me. They are watching. They knew everything I'm saying is true. It's in the front of you. Human being sometime can be the most scary creature because the second you decide to ignore the truth, you are going to turn to something evil. You see, because there is two sides of life, either the truth or evil. There's no so-so. There's no gray area. Either you are with God or you are not with him. There's no so-so. You can't say I am with Satan and with, uh, with God. You know, once I remember a Muslim, he said to me, well, we Muslims, we believe uh, uh, believe in Musa's and we believe in Isa and we believe in Muhammad. So if Muhammad is not true, eh, we believe in still in Isa and Musa's and we are saved. If Isa is not true, well, we believe in Musa's and we are saved. Look, look, look at the mentality. Look how he fooled himself. So what about we say, okay, I'm going to believe too in Buddha, and I believe in the Hindu, and I believe in everything, and then so whatever, if, if them is true, I'm saved. See the mentality? They are just fooling themselves. This is what is in your religion. God, he gave a prophet a mat, and this mat can fit for 600,000 chairs. And by the way, the one who might say, where we can find me the 600 churches, call me, challenge me as a Muslim, and I will show it to you. 600,000 chairs, this is not, not the only space. This is only for those who will sit. Because remember, there's genie, there's a chicken, there's birds, there's horses, there's donkeys. So you can imagine how big this flying carpet is. And then the story continue. 
So he command look guys look it says his kingship horses camels tent and troops we have tents we have tents in the top of the flying carpet do you see it what we have in the top of the flying carpet at tents yeah because the army will sleep there my friend <laughs> the whole country is moving make america fly again in the case of the american they will take their mobile houses you know american they have many of them they have mobile houses so what what a trump will do in this case trump he will tell them to carry their mobile houses and put it in the top of the flying mate and make america fly again that's that's astonishing and you don't want to believe what's wrong with you so we put there the tents and the troops oh boy how many troops he have give me give me a number muslims according to some muslim report that the troops of uh, suleiman is by millions all his troops is in the top of the flying carpet then then look guys look at the logic you see he don't fly just to fly no he put everything first look here there's a there's some intelligence in the story he plays all the equipment all the equipment i mean can you imagine how much equipment we have talking about equipment in the, of the old days of war and because you know army need to cook and eat and etc so everything food you name it I don't know what to say I wish I am good in drawing so I can draw this By the way, today after I finish, I'm going to order uh, uh, a laptop so I can take it with me in my trip. So we can make videos for you when we are away. All right. And I hope people will help us and support us in buying the new laptop. I was thinking about buying a flying carpet. Shall I shall shall I do it? Flying carpet. And guys, I turn my YouTube while I'm flying. And we share with you live streaming. And you can imagine the internet of Allah how powerful it is. Yeah, I'm going to buy an uh, uh, a laptop. Uh, which is capable of uh, can handle you know uh, broadcast because uh, when you do all those things if you see how many windows I have and I have those programs they are very very heavy so I cannot just buy a laptop normal one it have to be heavy duty and they are costly anyway yeah you can ride with me my friend you can ride with me for sure but uh, just take be careful uh, I prefer people who have lies to sit next to me because we are coming from the same place the lies club the prophet he said that Allah he examined his prophets by lies so I like to sit with the highest people because look like according to Muhammad the more lies you have the more you are close to God, to Allah so you have to be you know You need to be a lice person so you can sit next to me you know you are you have lies i have lies that's really nice you know and we take selfie and the lice is walking our shoulder from my shoulder to your shoulder i mean can you believe how beautiful it is 
like we are brothers and sisters by lies because the lies will suck your blood and my blood now so our blood is mixed the muslim they believe in something very funny they believe that you can be a brother of someone or sister uh, or like like let's say if your mother she uh, uh, did the breastfeeding for someone that person is your brother or your sister. Have you ever heard? Of I mean, Islam forbid adoption. Islam forbid adoption. And now you are telling me if I drink the milk of some woman, a woman, I became a brother of her son. What? Are, are you sure? And this is only if you are a child, by the way. So if I suckle, if I, if I drink the, by the way, this is about suckling, not just the drinking. No, it have to be suckling. So if I suckle from the cow, I will be a brother to her baby. Oh boy. This is why Muhammad, if you remember, when a Muslim, a Muslim woman, she came and she complained about a guy. He is looking at her, you know, at her shish kebab. So she said to him that my husband, he don't like that. This guy is looking at me in a dirty way. So the prophet, he said, will suckle him. She said, what? How am I going to suckle him and he is a growing man? Well, what do you mean how? Just suckle him. The prophet said, suckle him, you suckle him. You see the story? How I'm going to suckle him and he is a growing man. This is the only religion have such a wisdom. The woman she is worried that her husband is not happy because of this guy. He is a stranger in the house. And now the prophet, he come with the solution. He said to her, after she complained, whereupon Allah apostle said, suckle him. She said, how I can suckle him and he is a growing man? I mean, what's wrong with you? This woman, she did not watch porn? Hello? What do you mean how you suckle him? Are you playing dumb? And the prophet said, I know he is a growing man. By the way, here in English, they said young man. It doesn't say young man. He says, I know that he is a, a, a Rajulun, you know, uh, he's a man. I know. Too bad. I don't have Muslim neighbors. So their women will suckle me. So I can get in and nobody will be bothering me. This is the logic. So now if your wife, she suckled this man, it's okay for him to be at home with you. Are you sure? Well, I'm sure many men, they would like that idea, especially if your wife is beautiful. Anybody can tell me what is the wisdom behind this? And she will suck him what exactly? Do you think the woman, she has a goat, she, she, there's no milk. So what, he will suck her nipples? I mean, so beautiful Islam very open-minded religion you know by the way about open-minded this is when people they speak about open-minded this is the most stupid statement for those who say it you know what open-minded mean it's mean you are stupid open-minded this mean that whatever people they say you accept so what if somebody want to sleep with your wife yeah, I'm open-minded uh -huh. what if somebody want to sleep in your house with your pro no permission of you I'm open-minded what open mind mean? You know, this is something that people they copy these days, you know, like open minded. So supposed to, if you are open minded, you are a nice person. You are an idiot if you are what you call yourself open minded. Why you, then why you are angry from Trump? Be open minded. Huh? Hypocrisy, stupidity. The people they copy, paste, they don't know what they are copying and what they are pasting. Open minded. I don't want to be open-minded. That's not open-minded. This is this is your this is your mind in the floor. <laughs> I 
<clears throat> anyway, so my friend, be open minded like the prophet because obviously the prophet is very, very open minded. He is asking a woman to give her beautiful breast, amazing breast, to a strange growing man. And you are telling me that, and the funny Muhammad, he ordered them to cover themselves by the burqa, but yet they can get the, 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 their breast go by itself. So now I cannot see her face, I cannot shake her hands, but I can hold her breast and suck at it. I mean, this is amazing. So beautiful. We cannot shake hands with Muslim women, but we can suckle their breast. What do you want more? I'm sure many of you right now will decide to move to the Middle East. Do you want my citizenship? I left it behind. I don't want it no more. <laughs> I have a neighbor. I have a neighbor. Each time I talk to him, he says to me, like, uh, in, in your country, I said to him, listen, idiot, don't say to me that again. I said, why? He said, well, this is my country. I'm an American. Well, you keep saying to me, your country, your country. I serve in the U.S. Army. Did you? He said, no. So said, see, this is my country, not yours. I love this country. You can, because I have an accent in your country. You know, some people, they are weird. What country? The only thing I miss about my country is suckling, as you see. I mean, look at this. So beautiful. We don't have this here. Oh. Hmm. I was, you know, I thought a few years ago to do a drive through suckling restaurant in Las Vegas. But sadly, I don't have enough money to open this business. So imagine this. In Las Vegas, we bring women who do breast suckling halal, halal, halal by Allah. Everything is according to the book, according to the hadith. And then we have two holes in the walls and women, they put their boobs and drive it through and people pay money. Imagine how much money they will make. And it's halal, halal, legally halal. But sadly, I don't have the money. I mean, what you can do, I get the idea. I should not share this idea with you. What if somebody of you is rich now, he would do it. Well, my friend, if you want to invest, go and make a donation so we can buy a laptop. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to stop making videos when I am abroad. I'm leaving in a few days. So if you want to invest, if you want us to do a live broadcast, go and invest. Let us see your investment, how strong it is. Oh, buddy. Any Abdul? I mean, this religion, flying carpet, flying boobs. I mean, everything is flying. Ideas, flying thoughts. You see Muhammad speaking about chicken. The, the second verse is speaking about something else. If you go in the Quran, you will not find one verse in the Quran connected with the one before it. They have nothing to do with each other. By the way, when you attend my channel, you have to sign a disclaimer. Disclaimer: If you die from laughing, it's not my problem. <laughs> I'm not responsible. Okay? Hello? Don't sue me. Yeah, because in, then in, in the news they will say an Arab guy, an Arab Christian, he killed ten American from laughing. They will make me. Oh, here we go. He's an Arab ready. I am a terrorist for sure because I'm an Arab. When I go in the airplane, you know. <clears throat> Always, 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 I have the advantage. I used before to ask for the window. Never again. Always, I am next to the window. How it happened, I don't know. They check in their computer. Oh, this guy originally from the Middle East. Put him in the corner so he cannot move. And always, I got a window. Never ask for window again. It is my privilege. In any airline, anywhere, it doesn't matter where you go. You go to China, you it doesn't matter. I will have always a window seat. Unbelievable. Uh, hey guys, how I can contact CP? My friend, we have a you can contact me. 
Why you want to contact me? If you want to make a donation, make a donation, then you contact me. <laughs> I am the same as Muhammad. Muhammad in the Quran says, Hey brothers, if you want to contact the Prophet for a private consultation, you have to pay him first. So are you trying to contact me for free? Are you serious? I mean, come on. You remember the verse? Have you ever heard of a prophet? He will not talk to you unless you pay him first. No money, no honey. Read carefully with me. Chapter 58, verse number 12. Ye who believe, when you consult ye with the messenger in the private, Spend something in a charity. What charity? What charity? Spend something in charity. Before your private consultation, where is this guy, Pen? Where is, where is he? Where are you, man? You want to talk to me before you spend something in the private conversation? Are you kidding me? That's not even fair. Until now, not a single Muslim gave us a call. How much to, to, to talk to me? You have to give me seven ajwa. <laughs> seven ajwa is a solution because I'm afraid that I'm being poisoned. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim would like to say anything? Any Muslim have a comment? Yeah, and you know, remember, I'm not making fun of the Muslims. I'm making fun of this God. This is stupid God and this this, this false prophet. Obviously, don't don't you see? Don't you see that he is taking advantage of them? He make verses about women. They want to give themselves. The nation is not only money. He want he want women too. Imagine he made verses saying any Muslim women can give herself for sex to sleep with him. I mean, what? How in the world you can accept that? Abdul, and the funny, the Quran speak about uh, Paul. You remember Paul? The Muslim they keep attacking Paul, right? But the Muslims, because they are ignorant, they do not know that Paul is mentioned as a part of a story in the Quran. And the Quran said about Paul and the apostle of Jesus that Paul and Simon Peter, which is uh, 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 named in Arabic, uh, in Arabic they name Paul as Bulos. This is the Muslim the way of uh, of naming, not Paulus. They use the, the Sa. So, if you go in the Quran, you will see the story here is speaking about the messengers of the Messiah, chapter thirty six, verse number twenty one, and this verse says that you should follow those who ask you no wages. In Arabic, actually, it is not reward; it's wages. Let us see the different translation. No, I don't they have fast translation. This guy he translated as fees. I mean, I don't know. The, the, the translation is very funny when Muslim translate. Anyway, so the Quran says, follow those who ask of you no wages. Speaking about the apostles of Christ. So how Muhammad is asking for wages? Why you need to give? Let us say, let us say for the sake of argument that the Muslim, they will say to you, this is a charity. This is not a charity. This is a charity to the Prophet. This is money to the Prophet. You see, if people, they are going to help voluntarily, 
that's wonderful but you say to them before you meet with me you need to give a charity this is not charity no more this is wages is that correct if if I say if you want to attend this meeting right now with me I'm going to make live broadcast only for those who make a donation that is not that is not a public service for free no more do we agree do we agree if you are making it only for those who provide money that's that's mean you are doing private service and the Quran here confirm that the apostles of Jesus they ask for no wages so why Muhammad asking for wages This is the madness of this religion. He's using them, abusing them, taking their money. If you remember the story of, uh, let us see, when Muhammad he saw a bunch of women, how how Muhammad he will make them pay him money, give him money. Let me show you the the tactic Muhammad he used. Let me see. Read, guys, read carefully with me. Look, look at the tactic how to make people give you money. Learn from Muhammad. <clears throat> I attended the prayer with the Messenger of Allah on the day of Eid, which means the holiday. He started with his prayer before the khutbah, khutbah which means a speech with no adhan and no etc he's the, 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 suddenly he didn't want to go and do a regular he, he have something to import to finish because now he is going to ask for money let us see what he said then he moved away and went to the women muhammad now came to the women and bilal was with him he commanded them he commanded the women to do what to fear allah and exhorted them and reminded them he praised and glorified Allah then he urged them to obey Allah then he said give it charity give it charity for most of you are the fuel of hell why you need to give charity guys why you need to give a charity are you listening guys with me give it charity because most of you are the fuel of hell so why now those women they will give a charity because muhammad he told them you are the fuel of hell so in order to make them pay he scared the hell of them so if you don't want to go to hell will give me the charity and look what happened give a charity for most of you are the fuel of hell a lowly women with dark cheeks said why why oh messenger of allah like why we will go to hell and why we have to pay charity he said you complain a great deal and are ungrateful to your husbands they started taking off their necklace earring and rings and throw them into Bilal garment and giving them in a charity do you see it guys do you see it okay let me practice this ladies ladies who are listening to me we have 250 40 people listening I'm assuming like a hundred 20 maybe between them are ladies let us make some money ladies give a charity for most of you will go to hell give a charity 
or you will be burned. Uh, I don't think this is convincing. Let me make it different. Ladies, if you don't give a charity right now, I will make you gain weight. That is scary. And I will make your lips look really bad. That's really scary. And I will make you lose your hair. Oh, man. And um, what else? What women they fear? What? Ah, okay. I will make you lose your lipstick. And you will never find it again. And not only that. I will make you, I will break your front camera, sorry, a mirror in the car, which means you cannot make makeup, do makeup when you are driving. So you better give me charity immediately. What? This is a prophet of God. This is a prophet of God. And why women, they have to give a charity and they are the fuel of hellfire. All those women, they are ungrateful to their husband, all of them, not even a single one. Muhammad is speaking to all the women. You see, the mosque is separated now, the groups of, the, uh, uh, there's women and there's men. Muhammad, he came to the women, all of them, all of you, you are the fuel, the fuel of hellfire, or most of you. Why most of them? This is how you can make money. And they start the poor women. So now what, a Muslim tell me, so now this woman who gave her necklace, she will not go to hell? Is that what you are saying to me? If I pay God, I bribe him? Who is the one being bribed now? Hmm? Those women now, they will not go to hell? Is that your logic? Because they give Muhammad their rings and their necklace? Hello? Hello? It's me you're looking for. You better give your necklace. Now you better do it. La 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 la. I'm a prophet. I am the prophet of God. And I can save you if you give me your necklace and your ring. Yeah, yeah, the ring there. No, no, don't give me the cheap one, the diamond one. Yeah, in the drawer. Like, no, open the drawer. Open. Don't tell me you don't have one. Every one of you have one. Open the drawer and get the diamond one. Don't give me the one is, you get it from Walmart for $5. You cannot fool God. I here represent God. Allah, he sent me to collect it. Why Allah, he need the necklace and the rings and the earrings? And how in the world, if we give the prophet our earrings and rings, that will save us from hellfire? Hmm? This is prophet of God? And hold on, a Muslim saying to me, this is weak hadith, are you sure? Are you sure? It's weak? Uh, no. It says here, Sahih. Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. Hadith number Sunan and Nisa'i 1575. Sahih. 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 You know, Muslims, they like echo, by the way. So if you want to if you want to convince them that this is a sahih hadith, you don't say it this way. You have to say like this: the prophet, the prophet, prophet, prophet said, 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 said that this is a sahih, sahih, sahih hadith, hadith, hadith. You have to listen to it, to it, to it, to it. Brother and sister, sister said you have to give your rings and you have to give your earring, 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 and charity, charity, charity for the prophet, prophet, prophet. This is the only way to stop yourself from going to hell, fire, fire. Until now, I did not receive any ring, any ring, any ring. What's wrong with you? With you? With you? 
What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Bilal is waiting, waiting, waiting. Where is the rings? Where is the earring? Earring, earring, earring. Unbelievable, believable, believable. How come Jesus did not ask women to give their earring? How come Paul, how come Peter, how come all the apostles of Jesus did not ask people to give them money? You see, people, they can give. They say, we are brothers and sisters, and we say we are in need. Okay, donate for us. Yeah, people, a woman, she gave her earring. But here Muhammad is making them give as a bribe is not as a donation this is not a donation it's not a woman coming and they discuss together like we need to let us say we need to buy something we need to build a church or we need to build a mosque or we need to feed the hungry no 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 you need to pay otherwise you are going to hell it was a solution to stop yourself from going to hell how you can bribe god so now if i am a, if i am a child molester and I give God, I give Muhammad a ring, I will not go to hell. Is that the way to save yourself from hell? Obviously, it is. And look, guys, Mr. Bilal, Mr. Bilal is ready, the slave of Muhammad, is ready with his garment. He opened the garment, which means look, Muhammad looked like to do that always. So he opened the garment in the floor, and everybody started throwing their rings and their etc. And by the way, the prophet is not into those things. We have to we have to mention we have to be honest it's a proven that the prophet he don't care for rings usually the prophet he care for underwear I'm surprised that these days he is thinking about rings and necklace because if you remember in the Quran Muhammad was accused by the Muslims that he stole clothing وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍّ أَنْ يَغُلُّ وَمَنْ يُغْلِلْ يَأْتِي بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ What does that mean? It's not for a prophet to be a thief. But why this verse is about what? The Muslims accuse Muhammad that he is he stole a piece of a clothes. A red velvet of a clothes. Chapter 3, verse 161. Have you ever heard of apostles of a prophet accusing their prophet of being a thief <clears throat> stealing clothes actually they are thieves all of them because the clothes they are talking about is what they stole from the previous attack so the thieves now they are fighting over what they stole which means it's a theft anyway what is missing is stolen already. Read with me carefully. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. When some red velvet cloth went missing in the day of Badr, and some people began to say, perhaps the Prophet took it, stole it, not took it, you know. So Muhammad now, he want to defend himself that he is not the one who took it. So he received a verse as usual from Allah and the verse saying, the Prophet will not do that. But the funny, Allah never said who did that. I mean, what Allah will lose if he sent a verse says who is the one who took the underwear. Until now, this verse in the Quran and the underwear is missing. Even the Pink Panther could not find it. We watch Pink Panther 1, Pink Panther 2, Pink Panther 3, Pink Panther 4. You will watch all of them. And you will not find who is the one who took the underwear. Because Allah is all-knowing. If Allah is all-knowing, why he don't send the verse? He say, hey guys, the one who took it is not Muhammad. This is the guy who took it. Can't he do that? But obviously it is Muhammad who took it. 
Otherwise, Allah will tell them, if Allah is true God, He will tell them, oh, it's not Muhammad, it's Christian Prince. Go to his house, check it out. You will find it there under the pillow. God is making a verse to defend his prophet from a theft of an underwear. I mean, have you ever heard of a religion like this? Look at the quality. Imagine, guys, God, for, for forgive me for saying that, but just to make people understand. Imagine if the apostle of Jesus accused Jesus that he took an underwear. Imagine if this is written in your gospel. Just imagine how mad it is. This is in the Quran. I don't know. If I am you, I will convert to Islam immediately before it's too late. As you see, there's many things there are very good, and you cannot resist this high ethical prophet. Nobody can beat. Nobody can be even close to him. He's the best. He's the best of the best. All right? Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Um, uh, tomorrow I will not do a live podcast. I will give you a break. Actually, my voice is tired. You can tell, right? Uh, I think I'm, I'm not feeling good. I need the breastfeeding. I think the prophet, the prophet. You know, the prophet when he says something, he do it for the benefit of everybody. I mean, the prophet he knew. How he knew? It's amazing. I think breastfeeding will do something. You know, how I can suckle him and he is a growing man. I mean, pff, come on. You will not know the benefit of this until you practice it. Did you practice it? How you can complain about something you did not practice yet? Right? Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, for those who like to help us in my coming trip, don't forget, please, to 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 help in the trip. And you know how you can you know how you can do it, right? Uh, if you like to make a donation, if you help us to buy the new computer, because I'm planning to do live broadcast when I am abroad. If not, then I have to just to resist, uh, like uh, record uh, using whatever I can find and uh, or the old uh, laptop I have uh, and uh, post in YouTube. So I hope people will help so we can go live when we are abroad. And until I see you, not tomorrow, the day after, I hope, if everything is fine, uh, I say to you, thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I mean no insult to anyone except to the devil and his scam. The devil is my enemy. It's not the Muslims. The devil is my enemy. You Muslims, we are here to help you. We are not fighting you. You hate me, you don't hate me, I don't care. But this is my mission, and my mission is not hate about hate. We love everybody as the Messiah he ordered us to be. Love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. So you curse me, I'm not going to curse you back. I might get angry from your stupidity sometime. I might be upset for not you are not getting it or playing dumb. But still, I feel sorry for you. I'm not feeling sorry for me being a Christian. I'm so happy to be Christian. Go and sit by yourself with yourself and compare between any page of the teaching of Christ, any speech Christ he said, and any speech your prophet he said, and you will see how silly your prophet is and how down he is and how far he is from even to be in a level to be even a good man, a little ethical man. This is a man who have no ethic. So how dare you to follow him? Your prophet, if he applied to work in the post office, he will be rejected. He went to his own son wife when she is alone and he flirted with her when the husband was not there. Your prophet is not even qualified to be a friend to you, to enter your house when you are not there. Otherwise, he will flirt with your wife. The one who flirts with his own son wife, he will do that. And then later, he forced his son to leave the women and he slept with the women. This is who is your prophet. We are the Christians. We declare that there is no better name than his name in the top of this earth and in the heaven. His name is the Messiah. He commit no sin, and sin have nothing to do with him. He overcome death. He is the life and the resurrection. He is the Alpha and the Omega, and he is the only one who can save you. 
not a Christian prince, no prophet, no priest, no bishop. There's one name in this world. His name is the glory. His name is amazing. And even the Quran used the word Messiah. Go and search, see yourself what the word Messiah means, and you will see the Quran just admitting that he is the savior. For this is what the Messiah is going to do. His name is Yeshua. Go and search what Yeshua means. His name is Emmanuel. God is with us. That is my Lord. And in your book, the Messiah is the living God. Everybody is dead except the Messiah. Ask yourself why. Why the Messiah, the only one who have no father, but yet he is born? Why he is the only one who have no sin? Why he is the only one shaitan could not touch him as Muhammad said? Why he is the only one who can resurrect people from death? Why he is the only one who can do miracles nobody can imagine? And why he is the only one right now is alive? Why? A question. We know the answer for it. Follow with us so you can learn more. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And thank you very much for watching. To learn more, don't forget to search for my books in Amazon. Search for Christian Prince, and you will find the list of my books in many languages. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.